Hey guys, so welcome back. My name is Mina. This is the Mina Does Art Stuff YouTube channel and on this channel we do art stuff. Okay, that was a bit of a jumble. But anyway, you'll have already seen me unpacking my <laughs> array of Da Vinci watercolors. I went a little bit crazy. I placed an order directly with Da Vinci and actually I'm based in the UK. Da Vinci paints are based out of California actually in the US and um, they ship via FedEx and I don't know if this is the way it always is but I didn't get any customs charges on the delivery of the items that I ordered so that was a bonus. Um, <coughs> I wasn't sure if that was going to be the case or not. I already had seven of these colours prior to this order from previous trips to the US where I'd purchased some of their paints. So Da Vinci Yellow, Quin Gold, um, Permanent, so Elizabeth Crimson, Quinacridone, um, da -da -da, I'm trying to see which one's Cobalt, Turquoise, Indigo, Green Gold and Sap Green I had already previously purchased from previous trips. Apologies for the lighting being a little bit um, uneven it is the evening now it's the only time I really have to paint so I have my uh, lamp on here and we're just gonna do the best we can I've prepared some swatches um, to swatch out all the colors I want to kind of see if my color order is about right I have this Sennelier tin which I have um, cleared out this had tubes in it and um, I took out the little tracks that were holding the tubes in so I have a nice uh, flat bottom uh, palette as it were and I've put in a bunch or I put in 30, 30 full pans which should be enough for my 30 tubes of paint. I have magnetized them and yeah so I'm gonna just swatch them out to get an idea of what I want my final layout to be for the palette and then I will get to pouring the paints, labeling the pans, etc. And then I will probably come back tomorrow or some so at some point during daylight hours when I can um, show you these in better light and I will do a swatch card for the palette. All right, so let's hop in to the swatching. I'm gonna try and zoom in and remember to make adjustments so you can see all the colors as I'm swatching them. So it's not quite so far out, so zoomed out. So let's see how this goes. Uh, okay. So we're gonna start with Titan Buff, PW6, colon one. And yeah, I really do like having a buff titanium or titan buff in this case on the palette. It's a slightly more opaque color and it's, um, it's great for creating soft pastels or just slightly more muted tones. Then we have Da Vinci Yellow, PY154. This is one of the colors I had previously. And it's a really nice sort of mid-yellow colour. I really like it. I'm not a huge fan of lemon yellow, so I don't tend to go for those sorts of colours on my palettes anyway. So I find something like this really does the job for me. Um, then we have Naples Yellow Deep, PBR24 and PY53, which is interesting mix. PBR24 is typically what I see for um, a Naples yellow. That's, I think it's called um, Chrome Titanate Yellow, PBR24. And PY53 is Nickel Titanate Yellow. So this is a mix of the two. Uh, it's another slightly opaque colour. And then we have Quinacridone Gold. Da Vinci's version is PY150 and PR206. I had this tube from before. Um, you can't actually purchase this colour anymore from their website. Um, this and the Quinacridone Burnt Orange are um, labelled as a you know, replacement pigment coming to soon because the PR206 and PO48, which is the Quinacridone Burnt Orange pigment, are... Um, being discontinued so Da Vinci have already taken it off their website so you can't purchase anymore which is sad but they're going to be coming out with a new version of this at some point I assume. 
Then we have alizarin gold, which is PR177 and PY42. It's really beautiful, sort of fiery orange red color. That's really stunning. I'm not a fan of traditional oranges. I like these more earthy sort of oranges, like the quinacridone gold is like my personal preference for like an orange color on my palette. But I think this alizarin gold's a really nice, much deeper, more red leaning type of an orange color. Then we have quinacridone red, which is fast becoming a favorite of mine. The pigment PR209 is becoming a firm favorite on my palettes. I do really enjoy it. It's, it's one of those colours that, depending on how you use it, it can either lean warm or cool, and I really like that about it. It does have quite a pinkish undertone to it, but it also mixes really beautiful like coral colours and peaches and things like that when mixed with yellows. Then we have uh, Rose Madder Quinacridone PV19. So this is a nice sort of pink traditional sort of like cool leaning red colour for a palette. Um, this would be like a permanent rose or a quinacridone rose type of colour. I, d I think Da Vinci does have a quinacridone rose or something like that but this is just one they've called Rose Madder Quinacridone. Then we have Elizabeth and Crimson quinac Quinacridone. Wow, words. Um, Elizabeth and Crimson Quinacridone, also PV19. This is a really beautiful version of this colour. It's definitely one of my favourite versions of this, Elizabeth and Crimson. Then we have Theo Indigo Violet, PR88 and PV19. So PR88, I believe, is a discontinued pigment for the most part. I think Da Vinci is one of maybe a handful of um, companies that still produces this pigment commercially. I know Nightshade Watercolors, a handmade brand, um, does have a Theo Indigo or Theo Violet um, watercolor that they sell, but they are a handmade company. And their version is slightly pinker than this. I think I actually have that one. But yeah, it's a really beautiful shade nonetheless. Then we have Artemis, which is made up of PG18, PB29 and PR177. And if that sounds familiar to you, then it's because it's the same as in Daniel Smith's Moon Glow. So this is the Da Vinci version of that of that paint and we'll see how that granulates and separates. I can really see it's separating a bit. I had some water drops to see how that dries. And then we have lavender. Da Vinci's lavender is made up of PB15 and PW6. It's interesting, most lavenders that I've seen usually have some PB29, so some ultramarine blue in them and a lot of them also have a violet pigment as well, something like an ultramarine violet mixed in as well. But this one has neither of those. Then we have manganese blue. Um, they call it manganese blue mixture. But there again, theirs is one of the last remaining commercially produced paints that uses the original manganese blue pigment, which is PB33 but theirs is mixed with a phthalo blue PB15. <coughs> Probably to allow their stocks of the pigment to last a little bit longer. It's supposed to be a beautifully granulating color, so we shall see about that as well as it dries. Add in a couple of little drops. You can see that Artemis really already starting to separate quite beautifully. Okay, then we have French Ultramarine Blue Red Shade. If I remember correctly, um, Da Vinci has three versions of Ultramarine, Ultramarine Blue. So this is the Red Shade. And it's the French version. French 
The French ultramarine blue is typically a bit more granulating. Um, and then we have Cobalt Turquoise, PB36. This is one I had from before as well. Cat hair. It's everywhere in my life. Beautiful granulating colour. Then we have Indigo. And I mentioned this when I purchased Indigo originally. I was really intrigued by Da Vinci's Indigo because it doesn't include a black pigment, which a lot of modern Indigo mixtures contain black. And Da Vinci's Indigo is PB27 and PB19, so that's Prussian blue and some sort of quinacridone pigment, quinacridone PB19, quinacridone violet type pigment. Um, and then we have Stormy Blue, which is the first of three custom colours created by Denise Soden with Da Vinci. So that's really exciting. Um, this is made up of PB60 and PR101. I'm pretty sure I have too much paint on my <laughs> swatch here. But, so I will water it down. And get a nice look at the colour. That's really beautiful. Then we have green gold, PY129. This is, in my palette, what I, f I find this far more useful than, say, a lemon yellow. So I would use a green gold the way, I guess, most people would use, like, a lemon yellow for mixing greens and things. And, um, and yeah, I much prefer this green gold colour to a lemon yellow. I have far more uses for this sort of a sh shade of mustard, chartreuse muddy green, <laughs> yellowy green than I do a lemon yellow. And then we have Da Vinci's Sap Green, which is PG7 and PY42. It's a really nice sap green. It's a little bit brighter than some, but that PY42 definitely gives it a slightly more earthy feel, which is nice. Then we have Olive Green, which is PG7 and PY42 as well, but I'm guessing just a different ratio. I'm guessing this one probably has a bit more PY42 in it. Again, it's a beautiful Olive Green. Olive Greens are one of my favourite sort of more natural looking greens straight out of a tube. Um, show you at the end, but it's a definitely a more muted version than the sap green. Then we have Denise's green, which is another one of the second of the three that I have on my palette of Denise Soden's custom mixes with Da Vinci. She also has a YouTube channel, which I will try and remember to link down below. And yeah, definitely worth checking out. I really enjoy her channel and her artwork is stunning. This is a mix of PB60 and PY129, both of which I have on this. Oh no, I don't have PB60. I have PY129, but um, beautiful color, really nice. This is more like the sap green I would think of for like uh, from a company like Daniel Smith or something. That's more my version of a sap green that I really like. As much as I do like the Da Vinci's original one, the Denise's green is more in line with what I enjoy. Then we have Chromium Oxide Green, PG17. I got this colour, it's funny because originally I did not like this colour back at, when I first started. Like a lot of people who are new to watercolours. I had a thing against opaque watercolours. Didn't like them, didn't know how to use them. But as I have progressed and developed, I have come to appreciate them for what they can bring to the table. And I wanted, and I didn't have a tube of chromium oxide green, so I thought I would try Da Vinci's. Then next up we have Perylene Green. This is one of my favourite dark green colours. 
it's actually a black pigment it's pbk 31 but it's a really really dark green it's also a great mixer for like nice deep foresty green colors And moving on to the more earthy tones. Da Vinci is quite well known for having beautiful earth tones, so I've got a few of theirs here. Starting with Raw Sienna Deep, PY42. I don't usually go for a Raw Sienna, but I really wanted to try one out. And this one seemed like a really nice shade of it. And then Gold Ochre, PY42 and PY83. Again, it's a really beautiful, sort of more earthy, sort of yellowy orange colour. It's really pretty. I could definitely see myself using that over like a traditional yellow ochre. And then final row. We have Burnt Sienna, PBR7. PBR7 is definitely my preferred version of a Burnt Sienna. So I'm glad to see that Da Vinci's version is PBR7. Okay, I'm not sure exactly when my camera cut me off, but I just did Burnt Sienna, PBR7, Terracotta, PR102, and just now I was doing Indian Red, PR101, and I was just talking about how it's got a lovely soft sort of pink colour, natural looking pinkish colour in, in the wash and it would be really beautiful for mixing some nice skin tones from, at least I think so. I'm not a portrait artist so I don't know for sure. Then we have Violet Iron Oxide, another PR101. This is a lot like hematite colours that I have or Kaput Mortem from Rema Schmall. And again, it's a really nice sort of violet leaning brown. We'll see if, how that granulates, if it granulates. I'm pretty sure it's a granulating colour. Then we can move on to Burnt Umber, which is a really nice, good, basic brown to have. It's funny, I don't always think of myself as being someone who uses brown a lot, like a basic brown like this a lot in my work, but whenever I don't have something like a burnt umber on my palette I find I'm always missing it so that's why I picked up Da Vinci so give it a go it's funny isn't it colors you don't think you use and then when you don't have it in your palette you're like where is it <laughs> why is it not there and then finally we have Denise's grey the third and final custom color by Denise Soden this is the one I was most excited to try um, this is her custom mix of PB36, Cerulean Blue, and PR101. I'm not sure which version. I think it's, it might be Indian Red. I'm not sure which one uh, she's used from Da Vinci. But this is one that she has been on about that she really enjoys. And now having it as a custom mix is made it far more accessible for many people, not having to try and always mix the right shades. And yeah, as she describes it, it's the perfect shade of grey for painting elephants. It's like a really nice elephant skin type of colour. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for today. I'm going to let these swatches dry. And then I'm probably going to come back tomorrow when I have some daylight and we can take a look at these in um, better lighting and we will swatch out a swatch chart for the palette. I will pour these tonight probably. I might record the pouring and add that in as well as a time lapse. We'll see how it goes. <music>
Okay, hi guys, welcome back. It is a couple of days later and um, the palette is still very wet. A lot of the paints are still very runny. That cobalt turquoise when I lift up the palette like visibly moves in the pan. So this is still very gooey. Um, definitely not set anywhere close to being set yet. But I wanted to come back in and do my swatch card. I've just filled it in um, with the names. I haven't put the pigment information on there. The pigment information are, is on the pan, so if I ever wanted to, I could take them out and have a look. But um, there's not a lot of space on this little card because I made it to fit into the, pa the lid of the um, palette. So I didn't want to waste space by trying to write a bunch of pigment numbers on there. Um, it does need a bit more of a trim once it's done, but for now this will do. So yeah, I'm going to get to swatching these. I'm going to swatch them. I'm going to swatch them in real time initially, but I can't remember if I already swatched these in real time or if I think I already did swatch them in real time earlier. In which case, I will speed this up and do it at um, as a time lapse, and I will catch you at the end. Alright, hey guys, so I realised I um, finished swatching the colours for this palette and I forgot to check back in at the end to kind of round out the video. So here are the swatches, all dry, um, I've got my darks and some more moody colours down the right hand side here, got my earth tones along the bottom and then all my other colours in the main bit there. And this is what the palette currently looks like that everything seems to be setting like they're all still wet but nothing moves other than that cobalt turquoise i don't know if you can see it on camera like that that pan is still liquid and i poured these paints days ago at this point like it's still moving all over the place um so i'm gonna leave this flat and um I'm just gonna close it up gently and I'm not gonna I'm not pushing the lid down so it's not completely sealed but it'll keep the dust and the cat fluff out anyway that was it for this video I hope you enjoyed the swatching the palette pouring all that jazz any questions let me know would you like to see a comparison of some of the da Vinci colors against some of the other brands that I have kind of like what I did with the Michael Harding paints um, if you haven't seen that video make sure you go check that out it's on my channel i'll try and remember to link it below and um and yeah so anyway let me know if you'd be interested in a video like that and i can do that for you otherwise i will see you guys next time all right take care bye